jury to make this call. Where is your client? Marsha, I'm sorry. He's with a few doctors. He's very depressed. Yeah, well, he should be depressed. He killed two people. He's going to prison. Now, what is your location? Here's one of the doctors now. Saw them. Who is this? This is District Attorney Marsha Plus. Where are you? We have a warrant for this man's arrest. Now, Doctor, as I am sure you are aware, there are laws relating to the aiding and abetting of a fugitive. If you are not aware of these laws, let me make them clear to you now. Mom, I am not going to jail for this. Marsha, I am so sorry I had this unfolded. I apologize. Do you have a pen? I'll give you the address. We're in Encino. Hi everybody, I'm Peter Travers and welcome to Popcorn where we tell you what is happening in the pop culture and I'm telling you people, FX has a miniseries right now called The People vs. O.J. Simpson that you have to see. I mean, it is 10 episodes. I'm telling you, once you get it, you can't stop watching it so you're going to be screaming at FX, show me more. Anyway, it is brilliantly acted, and especially by my guest today, John Travolta. This is his first time on Popcorn. I think that John has always been something really unique in this business, a movie star who is also a terrific, continuously surprising actor. So, uh, I'm so thrilled to have you here. I'm glad to be here, period. I, I feel like we have such a history. We do. I really do feel like I've spent my whole career with you. You know, I was telling some of the staff here that, you know, we kind of grew up together. We kind of did. You know, I remember getting a, a note from you, not an email, yes. an actual note uh, after I had written about Get Shorty. I remember writing it. Yes. Did you? Yes. Absolutely. That was it. it, it yeah, yeah. I was so thrilled oh. about your reaction to that film. And, you know, and it was you and Pauline Kael and Janet Maslin that had this little special, special niche mm -hmm. for criticism that was different than everybody else's. And, and uh, I'll, I'll never, uh, you know, it's iconic almost, you know. Well, that's really nice. But enough about me. <laughs> <laughs> we have to go here to this because let's just start by saying that you're playing Robert Shapiro. Yeah. And he was at one time when this case began the lead counsel, the lead litigator on this until he lost control. So how do you get started with this? How are you approached where they say, John, we want you to play Shapiro? Well, it was Ryan Murphy and Nina Jacobs that, that, that decided that I was the only guy that should do this. Now, why they thought that or how they thought that is interesting. Uh, uh, but, but I wasn't uh, going to challenge that. I was only going to investigate the, the, their scripts and their so-called Bible that describes the whole, the whole series. And, uh, and also I asked a lot of questions about the quality of how they do things. And it just turned out everywhere I turned that everyone 100% approved of this group as, as what's happening uh, in the high end of our business right now. And I went to four very powerful people in the movie industry. And you know a few. I do. And I asked their opinion. And they said, if it's good material and you feel like you can do this character, you should go for it and do it. So that's how it kind of got started for me. But it took four months for me to decide. Yeah, I heard that you were taking your time. What was, Ryan, if he had hair, he would be pulling it out. Yeah, <laughs> he's, 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 clever, though. he's very respectful. And he said, you know, take your time and do your due diligence and whatever you think you need to do. And I did. But I did the same thing with Pulp Fiction. I took four months to decide to do that. Two of the best things I've, I've, been able, I've done in my career it took the longest to do, but, but maybe there's a reason for that. I don't know. Well, there probably is a reason for everything. Yeah. When you mention Pulp Fiction, it's interesting to me because that comes out and Get Shorty follows it all during the same time as the O.J. Absolutely. Is going on. Yes, and what a, what, a, what a dichotomy, what a duality for me because here's this American tragedy happening at the same time I'm having a rebirth in my career yeah. like no one's ever seen before, and I'm so happy about that. And thank God for my father, who was a football player, was obsessed with the case. Mm -hmm. He kept me informed and in touch with reality. At the same time, I'm, we just had just won the Palm Door. Yeah, so you Oh, man, I'm not <laughs> <that's laughs> it. Yeah. Is it. Isn't it true that what was on trial here, we're seeing it through the prism of now, to yes. with all these events? Yes. When we look at it, what's on trial, too, is racism. Is yes. 
it, it, OJ seems almost, mm. you know, a little bit in, in the back of it. There's a bigger question that's on trial. I completely agree. I mean, this is the race card was used early in the case. It is still an issue today, which makes it the, the audience correlate. You know, there's, but it's about a lot of other, of other things too. I mean, if you think about it, classism, the broken legal and judicial system in our country, uh, to a greater or lesser degree. Uh, it's also about fame, celebrity. It's also about 24-hour news happening for the first time, and also a kind of journalism that the high-end journalists were suddenly borrowing from the lower end of journalism. Suddenly. Your CNNs and, 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 and New York Times are having to dive into this kind of sensationalism uh, for the first time, it seemed. Well, a trial of the century. In a sense, it really is. Yeah. Because we're seeing something that I think I, I sort of envy a young person coming in and not, and seeing this and being able to get that detail. Because we watched what they told us to watch. Yeah. And what this show is doing is saying, look at the people. There's pe the people versus O.J. Simpson, but right. the people who defend him and the people who prosecute him. Right. So I wanted to ask what your process is in coming up with playing somebody who's real, somebody who's alive, somebody who's there. How yeah. do you approach that? You have a little different look. Yeah, well, the, 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 the thing for me is that I've always felt that when you're as famous a face as... I am, mm -hmm. that you have to lure the audience in with, with enough of, of, of a, an invitation to say we're, we're going, we're playing this game, we're going on this trip. With, in primary colors, I, I, I wanted to look enough like Clinton mm -hmm. to say we're doing this, we're telling the story. I don't want them to be viewing me as something I'm very familiar with. Um, I want them to be familiar with the character. Mm -hmm. So in this particular case, looking like Shapiro was important to me. And whether that's the hairline and the eyebrows and the, the, the posture, the stance, the clothing, the audaciousness, the shrewdness, um, all that was very important for me to play to invite you in. Otherwise, you're going to be always...